Yeah, that sounds good. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. So let's go back to that shared screen. Here we go. You are on your login and you should. Uh, do you both have your login for command? Yeah, I'm logged in now. Okay, perfect. So when you log in, you'll come here onto your home screen. Um, so over here on the left side, you see what we call applets, and you can actually click this red KW button in the corner and it'll expand your menu. So you can actually see the names of them in case you don't memorize the, uh, the little graphic, but um, designs is gonna be what looks like a little tablet and a pen. And you're gonna click that and it'll take you to what's called my design templates. If you've never done designs, this screen will be blank. So if you don't see anything on it, don't worry. Once you start creating stuff, you will start to see some of the things that you've created. So, yeah, I, I guess I did create, I see some stuff that I did. I <laughs> forgot I did that. Oh, okay. All right. No problem. And if you, so anything that you ever do in designs, it's going to save as a template. Um, and if you don't want it for some reason, you can always go and delete it too. So if you're like, oh, I didn't mean to create that. I have no use for it. Um, anything like that. You don't want it to lock it down. Um, you can just come here and you'll see when I hover over a template, there'll be these three dots that pop up in the top right corner. And when you click that, you can rename the file. You can make a copy of it if you wanted to like save this one, but make something else similar, or you can just delete it and it'll be deleted from your templates. Um, so what we're going to do first is we're going to start with social media. <clears throat> this is one of the biggest, um, the biggest sections within design that you're going to use, um, especially not only are we in a virtual world, digital world, we're even more so now since everything going on. So you're definitely going to want to take advantage of those posts um, and being able to design things for your social media outlets, such as Twitter, um, Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. So what you're going to do is down here at the bottom, you'll see a big blue plus sign, and you're going to click that, and it'll pull up a screen to let you uh, start creating a design. So we're going to click social and then click next. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna take me to what's like a template database that has all the templates that KWRI has created, like pre-created for you. Um, each, each section within design has different templates. So what you see here, this is, you know, I click social media. So this is the social media folder, so to speak. What's in print is going to be different. So it's important to check both of them because sometimes you can use one for the other. So you can see something in print that you may like, but you may want to keep it virtual, or you may see something in social you want to print, and you can likely get it at a quality enough that you can print it, um, print it out to use. So keep in mind those two can sometimes be interchangeable with what they have, but they are two separate folders. Um, I would say just about every day, new designs get added by KWRI. And when new designs are added, you will see a section in all of the folders that say new designs. And this is where you can go through and see what's been recently added. As you can see, there are some things that are not even real estate related. Um, and you, know, you have thank you cards and grat uh, gratitude posts. Um, when we get to the print section, I'll show you that they just came out with a children's coloring book that you can print. So there's definitely a lot of things constantly coming out all the time. So make sure, I would say once a week, just pop in and say, hey, let me see what's new in, in, in designs. Um, but for the purpose of this, we're going to um, look at a listing. We're going to create a just listed social media post. So for listings, you just click that and you have all of these options. And now I, I want to choose just listed because I don't want to do a lot of work. These designs are already pre-created for me. However, you could choose 
another design, say you go to for sale and you just like the way this one looks, you can always change the wording from for sale to just listed. Um, totally up to you. Um, but for the purpose of this, I want to make it easy on myself. I'm just going to go to the just listed folder. And up here at the top, you'll see that there's different names of social media sites. And this makes sure that whatever you choose is going to be sized correctly for the account that you're using. So for example, Instagram is a square size post and Facebook is not. You can post Instagram shaped things on Facebook, but not Facebook shaped things on Instagram. So it's kind of important to know where you are and which one you're choosing here to make sure that when you make your post, it looks nice, it's spaced out evenly, nothing's cut off, you just put all this time and effort into it, you want it to look nice. Um, so for this, I'm gonna stick with Facebook because that's my main business account. And um, you can go through each one of these, see which one that you like. Um, when you finally do choose one, let's say I like this one, and when I hover over it, it's going to pop up with the word use. This is what you're going to click to get to the editing screen. So that was your templates folder. Now this is your editing screen here. So there are multiple ways of connecting a listing with this. I'm only going to show you this one because I think it's a little bit easier. Um, however, if you want to know more than one way, you can always email me. I have videos on, on all a little bit more advanced uh, tutorials with designs. But for the sake of this uh, class, uh, we're just going to manually add the listing from here. So as you see, this is a automatically populated listing with a nice pretty picture, but I want to add my listing or somebody in my office. So what you're going to do is once a listing is added to the MLS, it will actually pop up in what we call the KWLS. So these are all Keller Williams listings across the country. So you can search by an MLS number, a listing agent, um, the address itself. So we're just going to uh, search for a random property. So let's just say St. Petersburg. So we'll choose this one because that looks like it has a nice picture, but you'll obviously be choosing the one that you want. This is just for example purposes. I have found that the easiest way to find a property using this method is to have the MLS number handy. So definitely make sure before you do this that you check on the MLS and make sure you know what the number is because that's going to be the easiest way to look this up. Um, so when I click select, it actually pulls all the photos that are in the MLS and populates them here. So what I can do is I scroll down and I see, well, which photo looks the nicest to me? Um, and that's the one I'm going to add to the outside. So let's just say I want to choose this one. What I'm going to do is come over here and I'm going to click. So you see how this is highlighted? Yeah, this is highlighted here. Sorry, there we go. What you can do is highlight the photo that you want to change out. Come over here and you'll see that there's now a second button added that says replace image. When you do that, it automatically replaces the image exactly where the previous one was. So you wanna use this feature because you don't have to resize anything. You're not trying to move it around to fit. It just goes exactly where it was before just with the image that you want rather than the stock photo. So once you pick the image that you like, you scroll back up and you'll see here it says listing details. So when you click that, these are all the listing details from MLS. So again, very similar to how you just did the photo. You'll come over here, you'll select the number or select the, the field that you wanna change. And then you come over here and say, okay, well this is how much the property costs. 
I'm going to hit that replace. But as you see, it adds a USD after the price every time. To fix this, see it's still highlighted. To fix this, you go up to the top here where it says typewriter. Here, you just edit the text, take that out, save changes, and there you go. You can also choose to either get rid of this dollar sign or you can go in and get rid of the automatic dollar sign here as well. Totally up to you. Um, if you want to, you know, kind of keep with the, the fancy writing of having this a different uh, font than this, that's just, you know, your prerogative with how you want to do that. So again, you can do this um, with the other sections. The, sometimes when you have the format pre-done for you, you can't always replace. However, you can scroll down and see, okay, it's a two bedroom, two bath. So here I can just double click. So you saw I hit the typewriter earlier. The other way you can edit the text is just by double clicking and see how the cursor moves. I'm not gonna lie, sometimes it's a little finicky, the cursor when you double click in. Typewriter always works without any issues. Double clicking occasionally, if you run into an issue, don't worry about it, it happens sometimes. You can always hit the typewriter function to be able to actually type everything out. The nice thing about editing right here on this screen though, is that you can see exactly how it's gonna be laid out. So once I'm in here, I can just change these numbers, two bedroom, two bath. So because this is all one square here, it's all together, I couldn't hit the replace button like I did before because then it would just replace all of these fields with just the one. Um, so what I can do though, is see this for reference and make changes rather than having to log into my MLS, look at that information, bring it back. It's still right here, which is a serious level of convenience for sure. So this is built in, wow, 1854. And I see that the square footage is 1690. So Again, you can come up to here and let's see, property address. So I decide I don't really care for how this looks. I just wanna make it simple for myself. I'm gonna highlight this section here, hit the replace button and see how giant this is. Obviously I'm not going to keep it that way. So we're gonna go back to typewriter. I don't need this part, I just want the address and the city. Because people who I'm marketing to, they already know where I am. It's not that big of a deal. So see how I'm moving this? There are all four side, well, all four corners and both sides have options where you can reshape the box. So you can just kind of move it around until you get it to where it wants to be. And then you're gonna highlight this and then you can change the size of the font to fit where it needs to go. So I just made it very small because I want it to fit nicely, but I don't need this anymore. What you're gonna do, it's highlighted, come up here, remove, and now I can make this bigger. So really it's just a lot of kind of playing around with if you wanna make some of your own edits and changes and such. But as you see, I mean, it's not, it's not overly difficult. It's pretty um, self-explanatory with a lot of the options. And it's just a matter of kind of lining things up and making sure that they look the way you want them to look. Um, if I did want to say change this, so this is the street, um, address and then this is the city here. If I wanted to make the city stand out, I could highlight that. And up here is where you change the color. So let's just change it to black. Maybe I want to bold it. So it has a lot of the same features as say like Wordwood or something like that. Uh, they're just laid out a little bit differently sometimes. So 
now I've decided that this is exactly how I want to post to Facebook. Everything looks good. It's awesome. Well, now I need to download it. So up at the top here, you're going to see the arrow with that line. And when you hover over it, you'll see the word download. Because this is going to be a social media post, you want it to be a JPEG file. So this is JPEG. It's going to be the first option. It's already set up for you. Um, automatically, the quality is set to 91 out of 100. <clears throat> Not 100% sure why, but you'll always want to just drive it over to 100 to make sure you're getting the best quality photo for your post. So once you do that, then you just hit start download. And sometimes it can take between 10 seconds and I've had it take up to a minute before. It just depends on your computer speed and how big the file is. But as you see, it pops up down here. And when I click it, I can see my photo posted. So now I'm going to go to Facebook. And once I'm on my home screen here, um, I'm going to add a photo. Then I'll go to my downloads, <clears throat> select that photo I just created. <clears throat> Excuse me, you guys. Select that photo I just created. And um, I can make that post that I want. You can also, you can add it to your newsfeed, you can add it to your story. Um, you can go to your business page and add it there. Um, my entire Facebook is a business page, but if you have a separate business page um, associated with your Facebook, you would just go to that page and then post, uh, post through that page instead. Um, so just so you can see where you would go for that. Uh, okay. So once I've done my Facebook post, I want to make sure this is saved. I want to reuse this template at some point. I just put a lot of work into it. You're just going to go over here and you're going to hit done. When you do that, it is now part of your designs templates. So another way that you can post to Facebook, not to get off on a tangent, but I do want you guys to know it kind of is its own part of its own class. But if you have your Facebook connected to your command, there's actually two different ways you connect Facebook to command. You can connect it for the ads manager, which is running those Facebook ads that we talk about all the time. And then there is a social post uh, connection that you can make. So you can actually go into your campaign section here, it's that microphone. And when you go into the campaign section, here you'll see an option that says social posts. And you can actually schedule out weeks in advance these social posts you create through design. So I'm not gonna get super into this, but if you guys wanna play around with it, I just want to let you know that it is there, which is super helpful for anybody who is like me and terrible at remembering, <laughs> you know, I need to post this at 3 p.m. on Thursdays because that's what a blog told me most people are on Facebook. I don't know if it's true or not, but I believe them. So I can never remember to post something exactly 3 o'clock on a Thursday. So this will let you do that. Um, you can just schedule the time, schedule the page that it's associated with, like your business page, and it just automatically sends it and posts it for you. Um, I don't, like you said, I don't really want to get off on a tangent on Facebook, but if I wanted to connect my Facebook, so like if I go in <clears throat> and it says Facebook Ads Manager um, Connect Account, and it, it like, it's like connect, it says Continuous Alexandria, um, but I really want to do my business page, but it's like continuing as like my personal. Is there a way to switch that? So what it does is it actually, well, what it should do is when you do it, so it'll say continue as Alexandria, but then when you go to actually post, it recognizes your business pages. And it, when you do an ads manager post, for example, or a social media post, it'll ask yeah. you like what page you want to post from. And it's a drop down menu and your business page should show up there. Okay. Okay. Now, is there a difference between like when I say connect new accounts, it says Facebook ads manager, and then it says Facebook post scheduling. So what there's no difference in the account you sign into just the into the way that command 
integrates with Facebook is different for both of those services. So they're considered two different logins or like two different, not even logins, two different integrations. Um, so you do have to like connect twice, but that's really the only difference. It's just okay. because posting to your page and then running an ad are just using two different features of Facebook. Okay. Okay. I get it. Thank you. No problem. All right, so we're gonna go back to designs. I just wanted to show you guys that. And if you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, I can always answer questions, um, no matter what office you're from, we're all Uvaldini. And um, I have a lot of pre-recorded videos um, and help sites and stuff that can uh, kind of help you utilize this a lot better too. If you want something a little bit more advanced or want something for a follow-up or anything like that. and before we hang up today, I will put my email in the inbox and or in the chat box and you can uh, ask me any questions there as well. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is look at print. Um, we're just going to look at print kind of quickly um, just because there I could spend probably five hours just on print and social media um, and I want to give you guys the the basics of what you need. Um, I highly, highly, highly recommend you go in and just look through each one of these sections. So pull up the social one, pull up the print, go through each of these like subfolders in here because there is so much. And like I said before, they, they're constantly adding new things and, and you want to be able to kind of go through and see, oh, I like this and, and make sure that you know kind of what's there. Um, I've had people tell me they had no idea that we have pre-made buyer and listing presentations that you can print out or download for your clients. Um, they are super professional looking and they, they only take a little bit of customization and you have that right at your fingertips. So you really won't know 100% until you go and explore a little bit. So that's just my tiny tangent. So here you'll see again there is a new designs category uh, just like in social. So when you go and you select that you'll see um, some of the new designs added are these bifolds and uh, booklets. Um, additionally, uh, you'll always wanna check the pivot shift ahead too, um, because a lot of times new designs are added to this category as well. Um, rather than being put in the new designs folder, they're put in a pivot shift ahead because that's specifically what it was created around. Um, so sometimes there's new ones in here too, so I would always check that. So here is that um, activity book I told you guys about. It's like a coloring slash activity book. Um, this is a great thing to brand to your market center and print out copies of these and carry them with you with any of your presentation stuff because you never know when somebody is going to surprise you and say, oh, hey, I hope you don't mind. I brought my three-year-old along with me for this presentation. And anybody who has kids knows they don't always have the greatest attention span and they distract <coughs> your buyer during the presentation. If you have this, it makes you look professional, prepared. It gives the kids something to do. I highly, highly, highly recommend keeping a few copies on you because you never know when they're going to come in handy. Yeah, quick question. Um, yes. How did you get to that uh, template? Okay, let me just exit out of here. I'll just start over really fast. So down here at the bottom, there's a big plus sign. Wait, oh, I see sign. that. Okay. When you click that, um, I was just in the print category. I see. I see, that's how you got there, next. Yep, okay. and then at the bottom, there's that pivot shift ahead, and that's how I got to this guy, but there gotcha. are Go to the plus sign. here. Awesome. So what I'm gonna show you guys quickly is just a few, um, a few features that I like the most about print, but again, like I said, go through them all, see what you like. Um, one of the, um, one of the coolest, in my opinion, features is um, that we do postcards. So you can actually go to campaigns where we just were with Facebook, go to campaigns and you can actually send out postcards, like straight from your command. We, we work with a company that sends them out. You fill in everything you need to fill in and I it, think it's between uh, depending on the postcard you get, it's between, I think, like 40-something cents and like 80-something cents. And 
you can actually have postcards sent directly to people in your database that have addresses, or you can have them sent to, um, like they do a special targeting. So, you know, people in this specific zip code or near one of your listings or whatever it may be. Um, so let's say you wanna advertise that you have, you just sold a listing in a neighborhood and you wanna let that neighborhood know you can put that address in and it'll actually send out to people in that neighborhood um, through uh, like a selective uh, filtering, if that makes sense. So it's really neat. And then you don't have to come up with anybody's addresses or any of your clients and it just sends it out to the neighborhood like, hey, I just sold this house for all this money, free advertising. Um, and it's very, very inexpensive uh, to do. We have quite a few agents that have done it before and have been very, very successful with that. So. Definitely keep that in mind. Um, but here you can design the postcards through designs here if you want to make it a little extra special. Um, or you can actually design them through the campaign section. Um, really, it's up to you which way you want to do it. Um, but I just wanted to kind of show you guys these and just kind of make you aware of them. If anybody is interested in learning more about the postcards, just shoot me a, a little note in the chat and I can send you something after this that gives you a little bit more information. Um, if you keep going down here with these other folders, um, you can see there's the listing presentation. There's actually two different types of listing presentations. Um, they are 28 pages long each, I believe. Um, they're very, very detailed and they do take a little bit to customize when you have a specific house and you have to brand to your market center. However, they are unbelievably professional looking when you can walk in and hand the client this book that looks like you put a ton of time into it. Um, and they've already done the template for you. You're really just filling in the blanks essentially. Um, so I, I highly recommend looking into those if you want to make a really good first impression on your clients. Um, so again, you just keep going down and you can see there's all of these uh, options. Um, here you can do a neighborhood snap, which is like the video I mentioned, or we have emails where you can put a client on this for a specific neighborhood. They also make it for postcards, door hangers, and flyers. So if you want to, you know, go door knocking or just walk through the neighborhood, you can actually get these door hangers printed. Um, and so what you would do is just, you know, print, edit this to whatever neighborhood you wanted, print it, you can send it to Staples, Canva, you know, whatever it may be, we give you that template to be able to get those printed by your vendor of choice. Um, again, keep going down. You can design business cards in here. If you, you know, don't have business cards yet or maybe you wanna do a chain, they have templates here um, for various business cards that you can choose as well. So again, I could spend a ton of time here. I'm not going to just go through these, look at them. They work exactly the same way as you just saw me do the social media post. It's literally the same kind of editing, the same kind of download. Um, and you, you will save it the exact same way. So this just gives you some more options that are specific to things that are printed rather than things that are posted on social media. So I'm going to, if you ever want to get out of this template section here, there's a little X button at the top. You can just exit out of that. So I'm going to show you guys um, one more thing and I'm rushing along just a little bit because I want to give everybody time to ask any questions or have me go back over anything. So I'm just going to cover this one last thing and then we can kind of open discussion around anything else you guys want me to show you, any questions you have, anything you want me to repeat. So the final thing for today is the video. So you see this video option up here. We're going to go back to that big plus button at the bottom and you're going to select video. So here, if you're going to select the neighborhood that you want to take a snapshot of. So for me, I'm going to choose Bel Air Beach. And here, you see it's the first thing that pops up and you just select it. 
Um, most neighborhoods in our area pop up here perfectly fine. I've only had uh, one person say they couldn't find a neighborhood, um, but I think that's because it's more of a, a locally known area rather than an official neighborhood. If you run into something like that, all you have to do is just email um, KWRI or you can go to what's called ideas.kw.com and you can just make a note saying, hey, I think that this neighborhood should be entered. You know, this is like the area around it. If you like have a map or something, you can always go in and fix that. But you really should run into that problem. Most neighborhoods um, are actually in there, um, but there is one or two that are more locally known rather than official. So here we have Bel Air Beach and I'm going to hit next. And what it does is it automatically populates this data based on the most recent available data for the area. You don't actually have to look anything up. You don't have to do anything. You just scroll down and if you want to call this area something else. So for example, if you know that locally an area is known as something, but officially it's a different neighborhood. You can have that official name when you look it up, but you can change it to whatever you want it to be. But we'll just gonna, we're just gonna leave it at Bel Air Beach. Here you can see the average home prices, they're on the rise, price per, price per square foot on average, um, averages on market, number of homes currently for sale. So you see all this information and here is where it says the neighborhood top features. This means that these are key words used to describe the area. Um, down here is where your agent information is going to be. As long as your profile is filled out, um, this should all be auto-populated already. And then down here, same thing with your brokerage information. So your agent license number is going to be here, brokerage license. This all populates from the profiles you should already have filled out. In your command. So once I just verify all this information is correct, you see I didn't actually change anything or enter anything. I'm going to hit the next button and it just takes a few seconds for this video to load and then um, I'm going to go ahead and play it for you guys so you can just see it. It's about a minute and a half long and it does look the same for every neighborhood but it's really neat, I'm not going to lie. Um, so what we are going to do here is I'm going to actually stop sharing and then reshare my screen so then you guys can hear this video properly. All right. So let's hit play here. see there. Um, it creates this really, really organized video for you. And it has the, the sound. It looks like it was professionally put together. And that took me a total of 45 seconds to a minute, maybe. And um, this is especially great for past clients. If you're ever having trouble um, <clears throat> thinking of what kind of touches you can do for them, it's great for past clients. Um, current clients that you know are specifically looking in like one area. <clears throat> It's great for them. And as you saw, it had a screen on there that said, 
um, join my KW app. So what you can do um, is you can actually download this video. So let me show you that quickly. So <clears throat> when you are on this screen here, you can, um, you want to refresh your page because sometimes it doesn't pop up right away. So you can go to your videos here and you just click this three dot button and you just hit download and it'll download to your computer um, in your downloads folder. And what you can do then is upload it to Facebook. So if you have multiple clients that all look, are looking in a certain area that, you know, well, I farm <clears throat> this specific area in Dunedin. So maybe I'll post that about that area in Dunedin and then the clients I have on my Facebook page can all see that. Additionally, you can make multiple videos of multiple neighborhoods um, and you can actually email it out to your clients. Um, one of the best ways I suggest doing that is um, right now I embed these videos into Gmail. However, um, with the new command emails coming out, you should be able to put these videos right into those new command um, emails, but those updates will come after the launch tomorrow. So we'll have a little bit more answers on, on how you can embed those into there. Can you put the video on Facebook? Yes, you can. Uh -huh. And will it, so it'll be on Facebook and it'll play and then how do you get them to go somewhere? So what you can do is you can make a Facebook post by adding a video. So what you would do is, here, let me pull up the screen again. So what you can do here is you would go to Facebook and see how on create a post it says photo okay, and you went video. To Facebook, you went to Facebook, your own Facebook, not the Facebook through command. No, I went to my own Facebook. You can do that. Correct. Facebook okay. Through. No, that's okay. That's all I want to know. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. This is Facebook through like my own Facebook. Right. So when you go to the photo and, oh, well, let me, let me download the video right. so you it's a little to easier that. to see. Okay. So I go to photo and video. I gotta wait for this to download. Mm -hmm. But what you can do is once you upload that, it's gonna pop up down here in the screen. Right. Let me see if I actually have another video already downloaded. Oh, I do. There's one, that. yeah, team me. So it's gonna load here, but see how I can still write something about the video? Right. So I can say, download my app today and then put the link to my KW app. There, so in, just, there in that text. Yeah, so I can just put that link. So for anybody who doesn't know how to get that, um, what you would do is these go back to these applets here. Right. Go down to consumer. If you give my page just a moment to load. <laughs> Um, once you're in consumer, it has what's called site and app settings. Um, when you go into the site and app settings, you can actually get um, a copy of, of your uh, website or the link to your app. Couldn't think of the word. The link to your app. So I apologize, you guys. My internet's being a little slow today. Um, but up here, it says site and app settings. When you click that, you just scroll down um, and you will have an option um, here, or sorry, it goes underneath here where it says download app. It'll say download my app. Because I'm not an agent, I don't have an app, so you can't see that, but this is where yours will be located. So then you would just enter that into here and then you would just hit post. So they could watch that video and then right here it says download my app today and they can just click right there. Super and my, app, my app is going to not only tell them about that neighborhood, it's going to tell them about everything. Yes. Okay. Yeah, let me get you guys back so I can see y'all. Okay. Does anybody have any other questions about anything that I covered today? Anything that you want me to go over again? Anything that I went too quickly through? Um, 
questions? I um, I, I sent you a chat, but I, I do want to get more information about what you were saying. Because I had to get up and go to the kitchen real quick. I'm sorry, but you were saying something about the uh, targeting the zip codes with the postcards. Yeah, I did want to do something like that. Absolutely. So I will uh, take your email down and okay. um, I will send you that additional information that I have on it. Um, that kind of just gives you a little bit better um, understanding of how to use it, how it works, how it targets people and things like that. Okay, okay, great. And yeah. Cynthia just reminded me, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I'm going to put my uh, email in the chat box right now. So again, you do not have to be part of Golfside to reach out to me. Anybody in Ubaldini group can reach out to me and I'll send you anything that I have and try to answer your questions as much as I can. Um, so please feel free and don't hesitate. Do you um, have office hours at all? I do. Um, my, I'm in the office, generally speaking, uh, Monday through Friday, uh, nine to five. And if you email me, I can send you a link to my calendar scheduler. Um, okay. And you can schedule an appointment so then it shows you what times I have available um, Monday through Friday. Oh, sounds good. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, yeah, let me ask you a question. So uh -huh. the cute, the cute little video that you made was on Bel Air Beach or whatever. Yes. So you put it, um, you're looking for listings and you've done your little video and let's say you pulled up all this data in a certain Bel Air Beach area mm -hmm. um, and put it, can you target that on Facebook? If like, so I have the video, do I put it on a Facebook ad? And then they go to a landing page that goes to a market snap, or how does that work? Um, these videos are generally going to be used for your existing clients. Um, so if you have um, people that, let's say, they're not actively buying, but you know that they've been, you know, passively looking in a certain area, you can send them these videos that kind of and em like em emphasize. Um, you know, look how great this area is doing, look what's going on in it. Um, that's kind of why I always suggest definitely send these to your past clients too, mm -hmm. because you can show them how great their area is doing. Would you send um, I would have to look into the Facebook ad targeting um, because okay. I'm not sure how that works, but and how we I can get them to it. that landing page that, well, that has that video or the landing page that has that market snap. The thing with the landing page at the market snap is that you generally don't want to do it when you have a Facebook ad because when you have a Facebook ad, you send them to a landing page. You put in that work to make that landing page, but they don't actually have to enter any of their information to access that landing page. Okay. So when you do the Facebook lead gen form to, they have to type their information saying, I want more information. And then that's when you can say, oh, here, check out this landing page or check out this market snap or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't generally suggest adding the landing page directly to the ad just because, you know, we, we actually made the mistake of doing that when we ran our own test ad and we had, I think it was like 80 something clicks and not a single lead because they were like, well, why would I put my information in? You gave me all the information here. <laughs> right. So let me, let me ask you this question. So let's say Bel Air Beach, um, that you're looking for buyers for Bel Air Beach, and you say buyers from Bel Air Beach, um, oh, I've got, call me about this hot house in Bel Air Beach, and then they respond to the Facebook ad. Can you automatically, as a part of your smart plan for that, ad, that Bel Air Beach ad, give them, send them, thanks for calling me on my, Bel Air Beach House. Oh, by the way, here's a little snippet of what's going on in Bel Air Beach, meaning that little video. Could that be yes, part of a smart plan? Yes, you can do that. You can. You can add it to a smart plan, yes. Okay. And I actually suggest doing that. That's a very, very good idea. Okay. Okay, I'm just trying to connect the dots, that's all. No, absolutely. That's a really great question. Okay. All righty then. That helps me.
Um, can you tell me one more time where I connect? I, now I'm lost. <laughs> can you tell me where I connect my Facebook again? Like, I didn't connect it when I was talking to you before. Yeah, um, absolutely. I don't know where I went. Where Let we... me just share here quickly. Uh, okay, so I'm in command here. And what I'm going to do is go up here to my name, scroll down to settings. And then once you're in settings, this is where you can see all of your integrations. So you would just scroll down until you see what you're looking for. And then it's going to say connect account. Um, and then you just, you know, scroll like I don't have, well, actually I do have my ads manager connected. But if I wanted to do Twitter, for example, I could just hit connect account and then it takes me through the steps. Okay, I see it. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, this was very good, very helpful. I'll be back. Thank you so much. I've got to go. Of course. Okay. Absolutely. Well, like I said, if you guys need anything else, please have, don't hesitate to email me and reach out to me. Um, I'm always available for the most part. And if not, I will always respond to you as soon as I am. So uh, if you think of anything later on, reach out to me. Anybody um, who's on this recording, I'm going to send you a copy of the recording so you can go back and look at this if you want. Um, you can also access design training similar to this one through the Ubaldini uh, group YouTube channel. So don't forget to look at that because that'll give you a lot of helpful how to's and stuff like that. And um, we're constantly adding videos to that as it's new. So uh, please, please, please go and check that out. Um, or I can send you links if you email me as well if you don't know where to find that. So we're well, ending a few minutes early. Um, thank you all for coming. I hope that you learned something. I hope it was helpful. Please go and explore designs and command because it is vast and I could probably teach seven hours of it, um, but I would never do that to you guys. So go Ooh. explore it on your own, check it out. And like I said, have any questions, please, please reach out to me. Thanks so much, Thank you guys. You. I hope you have a great rest of your week. Thanks, bye. Bye.